the structure may experience severe damage and cracks under the uh, effect of wind forces and earthquake forces under wind forces what happens is, is that wind is basically a force based loading that is when the building is subjected to the wind pressure it may experience fluctuations in the stress field and moreover reversal of stresses may also occur under the wind load over a large duration of time here you can see that this is an ideal building on which the wind forces are being applied from the bottom to the top as we know that wind forces are much higher on the top as compared to bottom here you can see that this much amount of deflection may occur under this much amount of wind force here you can see that the reversal of wind forces are occurring that is sometimes it is going up and sometimes it is going down so this depicts the reversal of the stresses similarly earthquake also has dynamic effect on the buildings here you can see that under in this building it is subjected to random mo motion of the ground at its base which induces inertia force in the building what happens is that basically this building or any structure resting on the ground behaves like a vertical cantilever so what happens is that when the ground shakes the building behaves like a vertical cantilever and it sways from bottom to top sometimes it may occur that the complete cycle may occur in between only that is here you can see that the shape changes from like this and like this as we know that the motion of the ground is also cyclic this is basically the behavior of earthquake forces that is at the effect of time it is behaving like this and the stress in building again may also undergo complete reversal that is for example column having compression under dead load and live load may experience tension under the effect of earthquake so both of these like that is wind load and earthquake load both of them are very harmful for the structure if not designed properly now we'll study about the basic aspects of seismic design what happens is that basically the factor that controls the seismic de design is the mass of the building and the more the mass of the building more will be the inertia forces produced in the building basically what happens is that when earthquake strikes the building sways and that sway or you know like the distribution of forces that occurs in the building is much controlled by the seismic mass in addition to the quantum or magnitude of the earthquake forces that are being applied on the structure so we can't say that building will experience zero damage during the earthquake buildings are always designed as earthquake resistant not earthquake proof because earthquake proof buildings may be too much uneconomic uneconomic so what structural engineers do, uh, do is that they allow some damage during strong ground shaking to release the earthquake forces so for example we may consider that the buildings are allowed some damage during strong ground shaking by designing them for a fraction of the forces that is for example if 100 kilonewton force will apply on the structure code instruct us to design for only 10 to 15 percent that is 10 to 15 kilonewton newton of force only rest 85 percent of forces may produce damage in the structure here you can see that this is the graph showing the lateral force and lateral deflection so this is the actual structure this is the minimum design force that a code requires and this is the behavior of the elastic structure so this is the maximum force if the structure remains elastic but actual structure behavior goes like this so this is the minimum design force for for this the structure is designed as per the codes traditionally earthquake design philosophy is that earthquake resistant design philosophy requires that normal building should be able to resist both minor and frequent shaking there should be no damage to the structure elements here you can see that minor cracks are coming in the brick wall but the columns and beam, beams are all right second for moderate shaking there can be minor damage to the structural elements and some damage to the non-structural elements here you can see that the on the brick wall there are various uh, quantity they, you know, like there are various major cracks but in the beam there are small amount of damage to the beams column junctions and for severe shaking here you can see that the building should not collapse that is you can see that the building has swayed there are large amount of cracks in the brick wall the hinge formation there is hinge formation on the beam column junctions but the building is still intact so that we may be able to save the life of the residents so we always design earthquake resistant design not earthquake proof design here you can see that we are designing for the earthquake resistant structures or not earthquake proof structures although we can but to achieve the economy what we can we what we do is that we design the earthquake resistant design we cannot say that the building will not experience damage during the major earthquake building 
will experience damage to in the case of major earthquake but building should save the life of the residents so here you can see that when strong earthquake strikes the walls have experienced cracks the beam column junctions there is a formation of hinges but the building that is the frame that is rcc frame is still intact so what happens is basically rest 85 percent of the forces what we do is that we make the building tactile so what basically exactly is ductility so ductility is basically the elasticity that we apply in the building with the help of earthquake resistant reinforcement detailing every country has its code which guide us to detail the structure to you know like increase the ductility of the beam column junctions beams as well as columns so building sh should be designed for fraction of elastic level of seismic force that is only to only for the economy and by providing tactility buildings can withstand large displacement without collapse and undue loss of strength in this graph we can see that the this is the example of poor ductility here you can see that building strength is also less and building deformity is also very less in medium ductility we can see that the building has some increased deformability and increased strength and the, when the we make the building having good ductility the deformity is also very high and the strength is also very high so both strength deformability and good ductility are proportional to each other so what we do for design for earthquake forces earthquake shaking requires the building to be capable of resisting certain relative displacement due to imposed displacement at base so what happens is that when earthquake strikes the shaking of the structure occurs so building has to be capable of resisting that much amount of displacement due to the earthquake forces at the base of the building again i am saying that the building behave like a vertical cantilever that is this is the fixed base and this is the free base and we are applying force along this direction so in seismic design elastic behavior is required for special buildings like nuclear power plants and inelastic behavior is required for normal buildings like residential or public access building what we basically do is that here also this earthquake resistant and earthquake proof concept comes so what happens is that in nuclear power plants we cannot allow damage to the structure although we can sacrifice the economy so what we do is that we make the nuclear structures 100% elastic that is there should not be any type of damage in the nuclear power plant which produce a disaster in the case of earthquake forces while we allow inelastic behavior for you know like residential buildings for commercial buildings for office buildings even for you know like some important structures like bus stands or railway stations we do allow some amount of damage in the structure cause in those cases economy is very much required and in the case of wind forces wind also require forces to be capable of resist certain level of forces to be applied on it here also wind you know, like wind also do the do the same type of damage as the case of the earthquakes but wind forces are not that much high as compared to earthquake forces wind forces you know like can deflect the structure can sway the structure can produce vibrations in the structure wind forces are also very important especially in the case of the high rise buildings or ultra high rise buildings so here you can see that this is an certain example here this is the wind demand and this is the earthquake demand so you can see the difference between the wind demand and earthquake demand forces